sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Brother Dave Jr., would you pray? Sure. Thank you, Lord, for being able to come to church. Privilege as ours, Lord, uh, to be your children. We thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross, Lord, Amen. as the brethren have already prayed. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for these passages here we can look at and trust in, Lord, and believe and stand confidently on. Uh, Lord, that uh, we weren't born of the will of man or the flesh, uh, but of you. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for making us new creatures in Christ, and we look forward to you fulfilling all the promises that come with that in the yes, future. that's right. Uh, Lord, we're excited about that. We pray that day may be soon. We pray it might be even right now or today. Uh, but in the meantime, Lord, I pray you be with our preacher here, Lord. Uh, give him the words to say. Give him the Holy Spirit to be able to minister yep. to us, Lord, uh, that we might be able to be good stewards with what you have for each and every one of us. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for being here, for showing up, for being in the midst of us. Uh, Lord, as we said you would, and uh, Lord, for us being able to personally meet with you. Yes, sir. And uh, we ask, Lord, you bless the rest of this afternoon, everything that comes, the fellowship and the food uh, and the service uh, to follow. And we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Maybe see you this morning. I just want to preach a very simple thought this morning, a very simple message entitled, The Power of Jesus Christ, or The Power of Christ. Uh, there he says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power. To them gave he power. Uh, make no mistake about it that the power of Christ is connected to what upholds the world in which we live. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 says, he, up, he upholdeth all things by the word of his power. Yeah. That is, this whole universe, this whole entire solar system, the earth that you are uh, on this morning, this place that we're in, uh, the clothes that you're wearing, the hair on your head, the eyes inside their sockets, if one word of God was misplaced or out of place or wasn't true, everything would come to a screeching halt, a cataclysmic explosion. It would just go spinning wildly out of control. And so all things are upheld by the word of his power. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 says, so this power we're talking about is almighty power. Yeah, amen. This is the most powerful uh, being, speaking of God, in all the universe. Yeah. There's not a more powerful God, a more powerful being, a more powerful entity mm -hmm. than God himself. Yeah. And, of course, Jesus Christ, being uh, one of the Godhead, one member of the Godhead, mm -hmm. has that same power yeah. as God the Father yeah. and the Holy Spirit working as one. Uh, so we're talking about the power of Christ this morning, the power of Christ, the power of God. And uh, here he says, as many as receive him, to them gave he power. The first question is, have you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Amen. So how do I receive the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior? Well, 
there at the end of the verse it says, even to them that believe on his name. The way you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior is you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be your Savior. Anything short of that, you've come short of the power of Christ. Amen? And so if this morning you have received Christ by believing on the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, then I can tell you this, that he has given to you the power to become the Son of God. So first and foremost... Uh, the power to save. The power of Christ is the power to save. Look at Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. The power of Christ is the power to save. Romans chapter number 1. Look at verse 16. Romans 1 16. Romans 1, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Hey. So notice that in order to receive the power of God, you must be saved through the gospel, and you're saved through the gospel by believing on the gospel. That is the death of the burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Uh, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior is to receive almighty power. Look at uh, Ephesians chapter number 1. Ephesians chapter number 1. The power of salvation comes through the power of the gospel. An individual must believe on the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in order to be saved. Amen. Look at Ephesians chapter number 1. When we go out this morning to preach on the street, we're not preaching ourselves, we're not preaching our church, we're preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You and I don't have the power to save. Uh, coming to this church doesn't have the power it takes to save you. It takes the power of of the Lord Jesus Christ to save you. Amen. And that comes through believing on the gospel. So when we go out there on the street, when you're passing out tracts or dealing with unsaved people, you're giving them the gospel. Yeah. How that Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day. And if you'll believe and put your faith and trust on that, he'll save you. Yeah. See, there's power in that. Yeah. Anything else is short of God's power. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. You've got to trust in Christ, right, see? Right. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. So you heard the gospel of salvation. You believed on the gospel. You put your trust in the gospel. And you received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. He says, once this has happened, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit Amen. of promise. So when you believe on the gospel, when you put your faith and trust in the gospel, the death, the burial, the resurrection, yep. when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, He gave you the Holy Ghost. Amen. He gave you the power of the Holy Ghost. He gave you the power of Christ in the person of the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit now is inside of you, now dwells within you, and that's the power that you have in Christ. Amen. Look at uh, verse 14. He says, This Holy Spirit of promise is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. Amen. So that Holy Spirit resides within this body until the day He takes you out Amen. of this world to be with Him forever in glory. Amen. Look at verse 18. Same chapter, verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know, see that? Ye may know certain things. That ye may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. According to the working of his 
mighty power. Amen. See, when you got the Holy Spirit of God in you, having believed and trusted on the gospel, you've got all the power of God you need. Amen. Amen. You've got the power of God in you to take you out of this world and to get you on into glory. But you have the power of Christ in you to the Holy Spirit so that your eyes can be enlightened. Yeah. See? And so you can understand clearly all the things that are written in Scripture for your admonition. For your learning, for your education, as it were, on how to be a, a Christian Amen. in this world. He said that you might know what is the hope of this calling, see? Uh, this power of Christ uh, comes with it a great hope. Amen. And all the riches of the glory of his inheritance. Hey, when you got the power of Christ through the power of the gospel, he gave you great understanding, great knowledge. But he's giving you a great inheritance. And he wants you to know what this inheritance is. Amen. It takes great power to give a great inheritance. Amen. I won't leave a whole lot for my children to inherit. <laughs> a couple of things here and there. But can you imagine Almighty God who holds all the power of the universe? With great power comes great riches. Great honor. Great glory. A great inheritance. He's going to give that to you. Amen. What a thing. Many great, powerful men have, le have left behind many great, wonderful riches and many wonderful inheritances and has left a great name to their offspring. But can I just say this? Greater love has no man than this, than our Lord Jesus Christ who laid down his life for us so I might be the Son of God, heir to God's throne. Amen. In glory. What a thing. That comes with it. He says that uh, he has this great mighty power. It's given to us. Word. I'm looking forward to seeing all that God has in store for yeah. me yeah. on that day. Yeah. I can't wait to see. Now there's an inheritance that comes by works and earned rewards. But then there's the inheritance that comes just by being a child of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we'll get into some of that this morning. Look at Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter number 10. The power of Christ is the power to save. And when he saves you, boy, don't you get a good deal? Yes. Don't you get a great deal when he yeah. saved you? Yeah. He got all of your sin. You got all of his righteousness. Yeah. Amen. He got all of you and you got all of him. That's a wonderful exchange. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. There ain't a whole lot of me that, that's, very, uh, that's very becoming. But boy, is he pretty becoming. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He's wonderful. I'm not so great, but he is. Yeah. I'm not so uh, mighty and powerful, but he is. Amen. What a great deal we got in salvation. Amen. Yes, amen. Look at Matthew chapter number 10, and look at verse 40. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. What a great deal. Yeah. When you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, with him comes the Father. Amen. So I didn't, I, I didn't, it doesn't just stop short of God the Father. You get God the Son, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, but I got God the Father. Amen. Amen. We're one with the Father, one with the Son, one with the Spirit. Amen. Look at verse 41. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Can I just tell you this? There's no greater man to bear the name righteous or prophet than Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you know that when I received that prophet Jesus, I got a prophet's reward? Amen. You know what I got? I got the testimony of prophecy right here. Amen. This is the prophet's reward. Amen. Hey, wouldn't it be great to know all the things the prophets know? Well, guess what? I've got all the things the prophets ever do Amen. right here in this book. Yes. I ain't worried about Nostradamus. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't worried about Gene Dixon. Hey, I've got a prophet's reward because I received that name of Jesus who's the greatest prophet that ever lived. Amen. And he gave me the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is a spirit of prophecy. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So I can look into the future and know what's coming by way of this book. Yeah. He says, if you receive a righteous man, well, what man is more righteous than Jesus Christ? Yeah. When you receive the righteous man, Jesus you have the righteous man's reward. What is that? I'm righteous in Christ Jesus. Amen. 
I get the reward of righteousness. Amen? Amen. I get to learn what it is to live a righteous life. Amen. I get to know what it is to be a righteous man. I get to know what it is to have a righteous father and a righteous brother and a righteous spirit. You said you always live righteous? No, I don't. But I've got access to the one who knows how to live righteously, who knows how to work righteousness. And so he's given me the power to be able to live a righteous life if I so choose to do so. Look at Colossians chapter number 2. I'm so thankful God not only just saved me and gave me a home in heaven to wait for me, but God has given me a book that tells me how to live while I'm down here, amen? amen. That tells me what's coming down the road to watch out for. Amen. Colossians chapter number 2. He says, As ye therefore, or as ye have therefore, received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. So the command for the Christian, having received the Lord Jesus Christ, the righteous man, is to now walk and live a life that is, uh, that is reminiscent of a righteous man's reward. Hey, can I just tell you this too? That the more you walk as a righteous man should walk, the more of the righteous man's rewards you'll receive in heaven. That is that there are rewards for the Christian called gold and silver and precious stones and there's crowns to be won as a Christian if you live and walk as a Christian ought to live and walk. And you don't have to say, well, how do I do that? What tells me how to do it? The book tells you how to walk and how to live. Ain't that good? Ain't that good? That's the power to save. All right. Um, look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. The power to save. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. Look at verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But to us which are saved, it is the power of God. That power to save comes with a cost. That power to save came at a cost. And what was the cost? Jesus Christ had to lay down his life on the old rugged cross. Amen. Look at John chapter 10. John chapter 10. The power of the gospel comes through the power of the cross. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Jesus Christ had to lay down his life on the cross in order to fulfill the requirement of a righteous man dying for unrighteous man. And the cross was the means by which Christ had to die. John chapter 10, look at verse 18. John 10, 18. I'll actually look at verse 17. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Jesus Christ had the power to lay down his life on the cross. He had the power to not lay down his life on the cross. He had the power to lay it down and then change course and take his body off the cross. He had the power resting upon him to do whatever he chose to do with the cross. Amen. And he chose to lay his life down there and leave it there. And not take it off the cross and go about his own way. He could have done that. Sure. See, so why did he do it for me? Yeah. The power of the cross comes with the power to save. Had he taken his life off the cross before it is finished, the power to save is not there. Right. I don't get saved right. through the cross, through the blood of Christ, if he takes his life off the cross, you see. So my salvation really comes at the cost of the life of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. I can say it this way. Jesus chose to lay his life down on the cross, submitting the power, his power, submitting his power to the power of the cross so that anyone who would come, so that anyone who would become the Son of God must go by the way of the cross. If you want to become the Son of God, you have to go the way the Son of God went. That is 
through the cross. Right. Right. And then you can have the power to become the Son of God. Yeah. All right? If you, have, if you have already received the power of salvation, then go to Philippians chapter 3. If you have already received the power of salvation, then turn to Philippians chapter 3. If you have not received the power of salvation, then you should not move on. Amen? Right. You need to be saved before you can move on to the next point. Amen. Remember he says he would have all men uh, to be saved, comma, and come to the knowledge of the truth. Right. If you have not come to Jesus Christ for salvation, then you are before the comma. You've got to get saved. But if you're saved this morning, I want to get you past the comma in 1 Timothy chapter 2. And I want you to come to the knowledge of the truth of God's power after salvation. Philippians chapter number 3. Philippians chapter number 3. Philippians chapter 3 verse number 10. That I may know him, speaking of God, and the righteousness which is of God by faith in Christ. Philippians 3.10. That I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. You see, the life of a Christian after he's saved is like the life of Christ before or at Calvary there. A Christian's life is always to be laid down for Christ and for the brethren. Uh, you have the power to lay it down. You have the power to take it up again, you see. That's the power you have with Christ inside of you. You can, as a Christian, choose to lay your life down for God and for the brethren or take your life and go and do what you want with it. Yeah. You have the power of Christ resting inside of you. You can do with your life as you choose to. But Paul says his decision, his conviction, his personal choice after salvation is he wants to know God. What do you want now that you're saved? You see, a lot of people get up to the point of salvation, they get saved, and they're satisfied there. Yeah. That's all they want. But like Paul, there are many others that aren't just satisfied in their salvation, the power of his salvation, and the power of the gospel, but they want the power to know God. Yeah. They want to know God's power after salvation. What am I talking about? They want to know about the power of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. they, but how am I, how's that going to happen? Well, you've got to be uh, uh, willing to fellowship with his sufferings. As a Christian, you're going to have to suffer some things if you want to get to know God a little bit better. You see, the life of a Christian is not a smooth road of Christianity. It's not an easy road, a, a, a path of just, you know, laid back, loungy chair, lounge lizard Christianity. No, the life of a true Christian who wants to be a disciple for Jesus Christ is to lay down his life for God and the brethren. Well, the power of resurrection. Look at Ephesians chapter number 2. The power of resurrection. Ephesians chapter number 2. Not only does he have the power to save, but he has the power to resurrect. Ephesians chapter number 2. Look at verse 1. He says, And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. When you got saved, you know what God did? He resurrected a dead nature to a new nature, to a living nature. He quickened you. He made that spirit alive. What once was a, a dead spiritual nature, he's now made it alive. He's resurrected it. That's power, man. Amen. If you got the power to resurrect the dead, that's power. Yeah. As much as God had the power to resurrect Lazarus and to resurrect the widow of Nain's son there as she's taking him down the street to bury him, and God stops the funeral procession, and he goes and takes a hold of that little boy there and resurrect that widow's son, hey, the same power to do that was the same power it took to resurrect your dead nature to yeah. make it alive. Look at Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter number 8. The power of his resurrection. God has the power to resurrect. He has the power to save and he has the power to resurrect. He has the power to resurrect that dead nature. But beyond that, check this out. Romans chapter number 8. Look at verse 11. 
But if, conditioned upon belief, having received Christ, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. You know what that means? That when you die, the same power it took to resurrect that dead nature to a living nature so you can be made righteous and walk in Christ and know Christ and fellowship with Christ and be made conformable unto his death. Hey, one day if God tarries, you're going to die. But the same power it took to resurrect Christ from the grave, guess what? He's going to resurrect you from the grave. Amen. You know, we, we went to the fair on uh, on Friday, me and the family, and, uh, and, and Steve's family, and, and Pastor Beck's family. And on the way home, we uh, we grabbed uh, Kim and Steve's bag of goodies, and they had ours, so we had to do a swap. And uh, the Lord had already told me to go visit my grandmother's gravesite. It'll be a year. Uh, she died October 13th wow. last year. She was buried October 17th last year. So we're coming up on a year for that. And uh, I haven't been back to her gravesite since the day... We, she was laid to rest. Uh, so we, we, we uh, on the way home, we had to meet up with each other. And the Lord had already impressed upon me, hey, let's go visit the grave site. And so we met Kim and Steve there, and we exchanged our bag of goods there. But as we were, before they showed up, we took some time out and tried to find where she was at there, and it's hard to tell. But uh, I think it was Maris that said, wouldn't it be wild if all of a sudden... God called the rapture and great granny came and resurrected her out of the ground. I said, man, wouldn't that be something else? Huh? You go and visit, yeah, you go ahead and grab a hold of Grammy's ankle as you're going up. What a thought, huh? The dead in Christ shall rise first. So, you know, we, we, we which are alive and remain, not prevent them, and they go up first, and we, we grab a Grammy's coattails on the way up, you know, the dress that she's buried in. Hey, but that's the thing is that the same power it took to save that wretched soul and to quicken that dead spirit. Hey, one day if God tarries, you're going to die. That mortal body is going to give out. And we have to put you in the same place that Granny was put in a graveyard somewhere, some way, some day. And hey, one day somebody might come by your grave site right there and the trumpet's going to sound. And guess what? The dead in Christ. Amen. 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 Yeah. You're going to go up, man. That's resurrection power. Yeah. There's only one person that's got it. Yeah. That's right. God. Amen. That's God. Amen. Yeah. Hey, that Holy Spirit residing inside of you, and the Holy Spirit's going to quicken that mortal body, going to resurrect that mortal body, and we're going to get to a saying, it's going to change that body. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. The same power it takes to know Christ and to walk and live a life that's pleasing to the Lord, that same power is there after you die. That same power is there after you die because he's going to resurrect that dead body out of the ground. That was the same power you were walking in through the course of this life. The same power that God gave you to make the right decision over the wrong decision the, the same power it took for you to understand the scripture, the same power it took for you to say amen, the same power it took to answer a prayer that you might have had, that same power that you yielded to and watched God work while you were alive, for as long as you were alive, hey, one day you're going to die, they're going to bury you, but that same power is going to come back and resurrect amen. you. That power never leaves you, amen, amen. nor does it ever forsake you. Amen. Look at First Thessalonians chapter number... Uh, 4 and look at verse 13 but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep see my grandma she's sleeping right now mm -hmm. that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope we went at her grave sight falling over it weeping and wailing because you know granny's dead and we don't know where she's at we don't know where she's at we know where she's at this yeah. morning yeah. so we, we, we you know how, how dare you use a graveyard to exchange donuts and muffins hey she don't care <laughs> And the rest of them don't either. They, dead men tell no tales. You know. <laughs> we don't sorrow as others who have no hope. Right. What am I saying? I got the hope, the same hope of the calling that we talked about earlier in the, over there in Ephesians. That hope of his calling resides in me. That hope that I have of my salvation and the looking forward is coming. I hope that same hope is there to know she's coming up out of the ground one day. Amen. We sorrow we know as others that have no hope. For if we believe, see, you got to believe, see? 
You've got to receive Jesus having believed. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, that's the gospel. Amen. Even so, them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. The same, the same power it took to crucify Christ, to lay down his life on the cross, the same power connected to his death, his burial, and his resurrection, the same power it took to save your soul is the same power it's going to take to resurrect your mortal body. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, not by man's word, not by my thoughts or ideas, not by something I came up with, but by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. She was right. Had the trumpet sounded right then and there, hey, Grammy would have gone up out of the ground, but then we which were alive and remain standing there to watch her go. What's going to happen? We're going to go up also with them. See? Look at verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. There go all your Presbyterians. There go all your Methodists. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There go all your hard-shell Baptists, all your Calvinists. <laughs> the dead in Christ, as it were. That's a joke. It's okay. If you don't get it, it's all right. <laughs> You see, there's a lot that's going to happen on, on Resurrection yeah, Day. Yeah, there's a lot that's going to happen on the day of our rapture. A lot of sights and sounds. A lot of, a lot of breaking forth of things. are going to, The ground's going to shake. The, the earth, the soil's going to tremble. The rocks are going to split. The trees are going to fall. You have a Hurricane Ian. How about Hurricane Jesus? Yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. amen. Yeah. When, when that trumpet sounds, when that voice thunders out, a hey, come up hither, hey, Everything's going to be broken wide open. The dead are going to come up. And we which are alive and remain are going to go up with them. Amen. That's almighty power. Amen. Almighty power. Can I say this? The same power that, that will, will be displayed on that day. Do you know what is true? That same power for that is the power that's in you this Amen. morning. Amen. Do you know what I'm saying? The same power it takes to resurrect every dead saint for the last 2,000 years. And every living saint that'll be alive when he comes, that same almighty power is in you this morning. Amen. It's the power of Christ. Amen. It's the power to live right. Yeah. It's the power to do right. It's the power to discern between good and evil. It's the power to have a prayer answered. It's the power to go to the Lord in prayer. It's the power to tell somebody about Jesus. It's the power to tell somebody you love them. Amen. It's the power to take care of your wife. It's the power to take care of your husband. It's the power to raise your children the right way. It's the power for the grandparent to set the example for the grandchild. It's the same power to have victory over sin. It's the same power of resurrection day. It's the same power to overcome a bad habit. It's the power of Christ within you. It's the same almighty working power. It's been on display since God said in the, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. The same power it takes to uphold all things by the word of his power is the same power in you this morning. Yeah. The power to get victory. Yeah. The power to have peace in the midst of a trial. Yeah. The power to have comfort in the midst of sorrow. Yeah. That same power is there. Yeah. It's the power to watch lives change. Yeah. The power to see uh, uh, marriages that are on the rocks be brought back together again. The same power to see what wayward children get right with God and repent and come back to the Lord. The same power that shows up in a church service through the singing and through the testifying and through the preaching and the praying and the repenting. It's the same power, folks. It's the power of Christ. It's not man's power. It's not your power. You can't work up this power. You can't turn this let you wring your hands together and lather together this power. It's the power of Christ. Yeah. Look at Revelation chapter number 20. Revelation chapter number 20. Revelation chapter number 20. And look at verse 6. Revelation 20 and 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. You know you have part in the first resurrection? You know that? 
Mm -hmm. Being part of the first resurrection in, in many different kinds of ways. The day that Christ uh, saved you and quickened uh, that dead nature, that was a resurrection. Yeah. That was a resurrection. The first person ever to be resurrected from the dead by his own power is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a first resurrection. Nobody ever seen him like that before. Mm -hmm. um, and when you, if you were to die and that body comes <laughs> up out of the ground and is resurrected by the power of God, that's part of the first resurrection. You know that? Mm -hmm. And so he says, blessed and holy is he that hath part in this first resurrection. I'm thankful I have part in the first resurrection. I don't have to doubt that. I don't have to say what will happen when I die. What will they do with my body? Does it go and disappear into the ether? Does it go back to, to stardust? Is it like, do I just, you know, flow out into the ether? No. My body goes there. The worms are going to eat on it. But one day, sometime down the road, first resurrection day, amen, I have part in that. Hey, even if I'm alive and, re and, and remain, I have part in the first resurrection. Because I'm going up with them. Amen. I'm going up with them. I'm part of that resurrection day. Amen. Amen. Now here's the blessing. You ready? Blessed and holy is he that has part in, in the first resurrection. See, you're in it. Now blessed is he that has part of. Who hath his part in the first. I am in it, man. Amen. I'm in it to win it. Amen. I'm in it with the Lord. Amen. In the first resurrection, on such, the second death hath no power. Amen. Listen, if you have the power of the first resurrection, you ain't got to worry about the power of the second death. Right. You see, the power of the first resurrection is almighty power, God's holy redemptive power, and there's nothing about the second death that has any power on me whatsoever. Right. Say, so what's the second death? Well, look over at verse 14 of Revelation 20. Revelation 20, verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. See, those who have not believed, those who have not received the Lord Jesus Christ, those that have not experienced the power of his salvation, the power of the gospel through the power of the cross, who don't have part in the power of the first resurrection, they're going to face the power of the second death. Yeah, I mean, What's the power of the second death? To be cast into the lake of fire for all of eternity. You'll see the wrath of God abiding on you forever and ever. You see, it's God's power working against you yeah. rather than for you. What you have this morning is God's power working on your behalf, yeah. working in you, working through you, working for your good. All things work together for good to love and love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. See, the power of Christ in you this morning is working in you and through you for your good yeah. to get you to a place where he wants you to be. Well, if you don't know Christ is more, the power of God works against you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't resist that kind of power. <laughs> the only way to resist it is to get born again hey, yeah. Yeah. and swap one power for the other. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. All right, let's look at one last one. You got the power to save, the power to resurrect, and with that resurrection comes the power to change. Look at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Pastor, I can't change. I am who I am. Listen, you have the, if God had the power to save you and God has the power to resurrect you, then there's the power inside of you to change you. You can change. You know that? You can change. Not by your own power. Not by your husband's power, your wife's power. Not by the world's power. But the power of Christ in you can change your vile habits. You can change. You can change your diet. You can change what time you wake up, what time you go to bed. You can change your behavior. You can change your bad attitude. You can change the way you treat people. Yes, you can change. Because it is Christ that has the power to change you. If you're saved this morning. The same power it took to change you and quicken you from a dead nature to a living nature is the same power that it takes to change you and all the bad habits you picked up along the way. The ideas that you thought were Christianity were bad habits of Christianity. Yeah, yeah. I think too often, too many times, a lot of Christians pick up all the bad habits that Christianity has to offer. Yeah. we got to be so ultra-separated from the world, we can't do anything. Yeah. Oh man, you can have some fun out in the world. Yeah. You can go to a ball game. Sure. Hey man, yeah. you can go have a picnic in the park somewhere. Yeah. 
You can take a boat ride somewhere. Amen. You can go fishing somewhere. You can do hey, I come that you might have life, but you might have it more abundantly. So too often Christians pick up all these bad habits and they become miserable. And everybody around them, they make them miserable because they're just mean to them. Yeah. They don't have any friends. Yeah. They've cut everybody out of their life because, hey, if you're not as good as I am, then we can't be friends. Yeah. And that becomes a very isolated life. Sure, yeah. See, I'm tired of being hated, hatred, full of hatred. I'm tired of, being, of striving with people. I'm tired of, of, of always being disagreeable, always being contrary. So change. Well, pastor, I'm 80 years old. I can't change now. You're limiting God. Amen. Why do you want to limit the Holy One? Amen. Don't limit God. If there's things within the marriage that aren't working, change them. Amen. If there's things working within your health, change it. Look at what you're eating and find out, should I change my habits to prolong how I live the rest of my life, you see. Brother Gary is talking about that. We talk about that quite a bit. He's changed the way he's eating, changed some of his habits. Uh, he's doing it because he's part of a contest for at work. But he's saying, I've got more energy. I've got a little bit more uh, 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 desire for certain things when it comes to be able to do certain things. And I want to be able to do more things for the church. That comes with more energy, which comes with, that's spiritually thinking. You're spiritually minded, you see. That's the power to change. What is that? Well, that could be his wife saying, honey, you're getting... A little, little big at the britches there. I'm not saying she said that. Yeah. Or it could have been Holy Spirit conviction. Yes, sir. It really could be. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I, as, a, as a dad, I have to always... I, one of the things I found in this move to Concord, the Lord is changing me. Yes. And you wouldn't think that, you know, moving from one place to another would make a lot of changes in your life. Spiritually speaking, but it has. It's changed my perception on certain things. Having new neighbors and watching how they are and having a new environment and being uh, in a different place, having different uh, uh, um, just locations and, and, and family things that are going on in our life and, and different relationships we're forming in different places. It's changing me. Sure. Yeah. And I want to be a man that can change for God for good. Amen. I want to find areas in my life that God says, that was okay for a while, but you've got to change. You've got to now adjust right. yeah. where you're at. Yeah, amen. Yeah. If you ever think to the place where you've just fully fit in and you're exactly where God has you and what you should be doing, how you should be doing it, you're probably missing out yeah. because you have not fully completed the course yet because you're still alive. Mm -hmm. amen. Which means there's some adjustments that still can be made in your life, yeah. but that takes you being submissive to the power right. of God to change you. Yeah. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. I'm sorry, no, Philippians 2. That, yeah. Philippians 2, sorry, sorry. Philippians 2, 20. Philippians 2, 20. No, that's not right. Philippians 1, 20. Is that right? Where am I? Help me out. Where's that? Philippians 3, 20. There we are. Philippians 3, 20. See, we can change, see? Philippians 3, 20. For our conversation is in heaven... From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working. Remember before we saw the working power, but according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Amen. Here we see the power to change. What's he going to do? He's going to change our vile body. The same power it took to change you on the inside and to change your vile habits will be the same power it takes to change your vile body on the outside. Permanently. Amen. Amen. Permanently. Amen. Now look at 1 Corinthians 15. Listen, we can adjust our habits. We can change our eating habits. We can put on uh, more makeup or we can put on some muscle. Uh, but those things are all temporary, aren't they? No matter how hard we strive to change how good we look and how fit we look, eventually it all does come to a screeching halt. And we end up going six feet under and the worms begin to eat on us. So we need God to change us permanently. Amen. And that is almighty power. Amen. That's permanent power is what that is. Amen. 
Everything here is temporary power as far as it pertains to our habits. But in the future, boy, that's permanent. 1 Corinthians 15, look at verse 51. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. The power to change. Mm -hmm. For this corruptible body must put on incorruption, and this mortal body must put on immortality. So when this corruptible body shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal body shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Amen. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? See, almighty working power. Right now, everything in this life that you do to change for God, and God does change in you, is in a sense temporary. Yeah. Because we're going to die. And all the changes we've made in our life to, to make ourselves better, to make our families better, it stops one day. Yeah. Our life gives out. Our chances to grow, our chance to mature, our chance to make things right, our chance to, to, to fix things that are wrong, they stop. Yeah. They stop. They're temporary. Mm -hmm. It is the power of Christ eternal in us that makes those changes, but there comes a point where we can't make any more changes whatsoever. But there's still a future change that takes place Amen. that is forever. Amen. And that's what he changes this mortal body that we work so hard on. Yeah. He takes this corruptible body that we tried to make look so good. He's going to permanently change it. Amen. There's three things I want to say real quick. Number one, it is permanent. He says, we'll put, he says right there in verse 53, this mortal shall put on immortality. Yeah. This change is a permanent change. I'm thankful for that. Amen. No more wardrobe changes. Amen. Amen. We at that uh, at the show over there in, uh, in at the Deerfield Fair, and uh, and forgive me if you think I'm carnal for the fair. And what I'm about to say next? They had a magic show. Brother, brother senior back there, they had a magic show. Oh. So they call it. They have call it. We always we know these things always have yeah. an, 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 uh, an, uh, an answer to it, but we can't figure it out. Got something up your sleeve. Got something up your sleeve. That's the idea. <laughs> And uh, they had this uh, this thing where this girl was wearing a dress, a really beautiful dress, and then she'd go in there behind a curtain, and within like five seconds, they'd shake the curtain, she'd come out wearing a new dress. And she did it like she did it like ten times in a row, and, he, and the guy did it. He was wearing like an all-black suit, and he goes behind the curtain, and then they shake the thing, and then all of a sudden he comes out wearing a white suit, you know, and then the two of them together take their bow. I tell the guy behind me, I said, I've never seen any woman get changed that fast. <laughs> <laughs> he was loud for the next 30 minutes. I think you know. That's a quick change. Yes. Yeah. But the change that we're going to experience oh, yeah. makes that thing look like it took forever. <laughs> <laughs> and, there ain't no, and there ain't no magic trick to it. It's the yeah. power of God. Yeah. And it ain't done, you know, with something that we can't... Listen, it's a mystery, but he's going to show us how he did it. It's, yeah. Amen. Yeah. it's a mystery right now how it's going to happen. As much as what we saw there on the stage is a mystery. Because I don't know how he did it. I know there's an answer to it. I know that when this thing happens, yeah. boy, we're going to know exactly what took place. We're going to be present when it takes place. And it's going to be a permanent fixture. Amen. Let me say number two, it's not limited. Yeah. Look there, it says um, in verse number 51, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. It's not limited. Amen. You know what death is? Death is limited. Not everybody's going to die. Right? right? Yeah. He said, we're not all going to sleep. Yeah. So death is limited. Mm -hmm. It's limited by way of, we're not, all, not everybody's going to die. But death is always limited because you're not always going to be dead. Yeah. Yeah. Because that body's going to come up out of the ground. Yeah. <clears throat> but when you're changed and put on that immortality, that's permanent. It's not limited. Every Christian, yeah. every saved person, this goes back to the first point to wrap things up. Yeah. Full circle. Every person who has received the Lord Jesus Christ, having believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, he gives you the power to become the sons of God. Amen. What is that? That's on resurrection day. Amen. On rapture day, when I get my glorified permanent body, 
I get it. Yeah. It's not limited. Mm -hmm. Everybody from all the time that Christ died on the cross uh, to the day that he comes back and gets us, every person within that time span there gets a glorified, resurrected Amen. body. Amen. It's not limited. Amen. Only those who have believed it's limited too, but everybody who has believed, mm -hmm. we all get part of it. Amen. Amen. And we get the same body. Yeah. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't get I don't get a worse body than Miss Carol. She don't get a better body than me. I don't get a worse body than him. He don't get a better body than me. Bears don't get a better body than me. We all get the same body. Yeah, yeah. Fashioned like unto his glorious body. Yeah, yeah. We get the same spiritual glorified body as the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Uh -huh. We get the power of his resurrection. We get the power of his body. Yeah. We become the sons of God. It does not yet appear we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see and we shall be as he is. Amen. Not limited. We all get the same body. Amen. Amen. Glorified body, a permanent body. And lastly, let me just say this. It's a promise. Amen. See that what it says there? It says, we shall not all sleep, but we shall. Yep. See, I can't promise everybody's going to die. We shall not all sleep. See, death is not a promise to everybody. Right. But we shall all be changed. That's right. Amen. Death is not promised to everybody. Not everybody's going to die, but everybody who is saved, it's a promise you're going to get a glorified body. Amen. So what if I die? You get a glorified body. What kind? The same kind I get if I don't die. Right. God's going to make us all, we're all equal in the eyes of God in that right. way. Amen. We all are children of God, saved by grace through faith, Amen. with the same inheritance promised to us, a glorified, resurrected, powerful body Amen. that can never sin, it can never die, Amen. never suffers pain or sorrow or grief or tragedy, never suffers loss anymore. Hey, in eternity, everything is fixed. Amen. He's going to make it all right. Amen. He's going to make it all right. You know, one of the things I told Brother Tim last night, I said, uh, if you think about Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and you think about that verse there, we know that all things work together for good. Yeah. The, the, the discipleship that I'm working on him with is, is this. What kind of things in the Bible does God give to us as sons and he as a father? And different ways through different verses that we see God's love for us played out as a father to his son. And he says all things work together for good. You know what that is by way of a father-son relationship? It's the same thing that if your team, your son's or daughter's team, loses a very bad playing game, you can tell your son or daughter, it'll be all right. Yeah. This too shall pass. Yeah. It'll be all right. All things work together for good. Amen. That's a father telling his son or his daughter, it'll be all right. Yeah. Son will come up tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. You'll get a chance to play another game. You'll score a goal next time. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, losing in this game makes you better for the next game. Yeah. You, know what God's, right. you know what God's saying here? All things work together for good. It's going to be all right. Yeah, yeah, you know what he's talking about? The power of the save, the power of the resurrection, and the power of change. You know what he's saying to you this morning? As a good father to his children, it's going to be all right. Yeah. It's going to be all right. The sun's going to come up tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And when that sun comes, it's going to be all right. Yeah, Are you with me? Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we do love you. Yeah. We do thank you. We thank you for your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> thank you for the gospel of yeah. our salvation. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for all the uh, precious uh, promises that are there to comfort us, that are there to exhort us, to teach us, uh, Lord, that are there to be a, a, a help to us. Lord, thank you just for your encouragement, Lord, to let us know that everything's going to be all right. Yeah. Now, Lord, uh, we do live in a very vile and wicked world, and it's easy to get caught up in all that nonsense. But as is written on the board this morning, Lord, we got to get into that secret guard. we got to get along with you and experience that, that mighty working power in us. Mm -hmm. Lord, and just remember and to rest that everything's going to be all right. It doesn't mean all our problems in this life are going to necessarily be resolved before you come. But even if they're there when you do come, Lord... Everything's going to be all right. Yeah. Pray, God, uh, you hasten the day. Lord, come back soon. A lot of Christians going through difficult times, heartaches and sorrows and griefs and pains without a lot of answers or light at the end of the tunnel. And, God, we know that you coming back would solve all that. It's a selfish reason. I understand, Lord. We certainly do want you to come back because we want to see you face to face. We want to know you as you are known. We want to 
uh, be in your presence. We want to be around the throne. We want to give you the honor and the glory and the praise and the thanksgiving you're so deserving of. Lord, also in this mortal body, we want to we want to get out. We want to escape, Lord, the things that are uh, that are in our life that, that have us uh, weighed down. So, Lord, we look for that day, that blessed day, that blessed hope, and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray in your name now, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and uh, uh, break or set up chairs and have lunch and. Uh,